Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. A lot of folks really get worked up over what we call plain slop or backlash. I'm going to explain where it comes from and a few ideas on how you can at least alleviate it a bit. Stay with me. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. All right, I've got five planes here in front of me, and we're going to investigate this slop bit and see how much it varies between brands. So this is a Lee Nielsen, number eight, by the way. This is a uh, Stanley, uh, pardon me, an Amazon Basics. This is a old Stanley Bailey. This is a Stanley Bedrock, and this is a Wood River. So first of all, in case you don't understand, slop is the amount of turning that you have to do on the adjuster knob. That's what this is called right here. As you turn that, it pushes the blade out so that you have a thicker shaving. And of course, if you spin it the opposite way and retract it, you have a thinner shaving. So it's a critical adjustment, something I like to do while I'm actually planing. And the slop is how much spin or how much free play there is between advancing and retracting. So I move it forward, I'm tight, I'm pushing the blade. And when I want to retract it, I've got to spin, spin, spin. And at what point does it actually engage and pull the blade back? So we'll start with the best in terms of the most expensive and it should be the best plane. I'm gonna put a little piece of tape on here so that uh, you can watch along and we'll just see if we can count. Well, we tried to turn this into a little arrow. Now what I'm going to do is spin this until I see the blade. Okay, so I can see the blade moving, meaning I know I'm advancing the blade. So it's sitting here at about uh, 10 o'clock. So now I start spinning it. And I'm starting to engage the blade right there. So if 10 o'clock was here, and that's, we'll call that one o'clock. So less than a full turn. So this is a, an Amazon Basics. I don't remember what this cost, but it wasn't much. So we're sitting the point, uh, what are we gonna go with? One, the one down here, points at seven o'clock. So there's where it's starting to engage. So from seven o'clock to six o'clock. Now this is an old Bailey. This was actually my grandfather's plane. So I cut my teeth and hand planes with this one. Look at that small knob, a real problem when it came to uh, advancing the knob because you had such so much less torque with that small knob. So we're down here at five o'clock. It's one, two, ooh. So we went from five o'clock around twice and stopped at seven. All right, so this is a this is a Stanley Bedrock. So this was the best of the Stanley planes. We we'll just call it the bed. Put a piece of tape on there. We'll go on this corner. Spin that. Okay, we're, we're making contact with the blade. So we're starting at uh, well, that's pretty close to 12. So that's just making contact. That's almost one. We'll, we'll say that it's one minus. And then this one is the Wood River. This is a five and a half. Put a piece of tape on that one. I'll stick it right out there. So we're starting at 11. Let's see how far we have to go. One. And we're making contact right about there. So on the, uh, on the Wood River, we started at 11 plus one, and we made contact at nine. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our newsletter has subscriber-only content. 
monthly discount on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it, click on the link below. Let's get back to work. So if you look at it, this would have been the most expensive plane that came out the best. Um, I would have considered the bedrock to be the next best, and that's actually what it is. That, that came out at one. So uh, Lee Nelson was number one. The bedrock was number two. Uh, one, say one twelfth. The Amazon Basics, holy smokes, was number three. The Wood River was number four. And the Bailey, the old one was a real distant number five. We could have gone and done more, but what I wanted to stress is you're going to find this in all planes. So now the big question is what can we do? Is there anything that we can do? But before we answer that question, I want to go through and show you where the slop is and why it's a complicated process to get rid of it. All right, so what we're trying to calculate is what goes on from here to the blade. So if we take this apart, we can look at it a little bit closer. So your contact between the blade and the adjuster knob is right here. If I remove this out, so this is called the yoke. And this yoke has two ears on either side. They fit into this <laughs> slot in the adjuster knob. They pivot on a pin right here that goes through the frog. And then this end goes up through the blade and it makes contact with this little rectangular shaped hole in the uh, chip breaker. And it either pushes or pulls. So if you look at this contact point, you can see that there's a little bit of slop. You can see how much the end of that yoke moves from forward to reverse. So there's some slop. So if we take this out, continue to focus on this, you can feel the amount of slop that there is just in the hole in the yoke and the pin that goes through the frog, there's that much slop there. So another spot. Then you come down here a little bit farther and you can see the two ears as they fit in this slot on the uh, adjuster knob. I can move it forward and back so there's a little bit of slop there. And finally, you can actually move the adjuster knob on this threaded rod. Not, as, not a lot, but a little bit. So all of those add up to produce your backlash. Okay, so here's what you've been waiting for. <laughs> My best advice is don't sweat it. It's not worth getting worked up over. You're enjoying your hand plane. Just live with a little bit of it. But if you're really uptight on it and you want to do something, the uh, main point, obviously, is the yoke. So there's something that you can do to reduce the slop between the end of the yoke and the slot in your chip breaker. That same solution can help you get rid of that slop around the pin, and it can also help you get rid of that slop where the ears fit the slot in the adjuster knob. Now, Wood by Wright has them, and it's called the, uh, uh, the Reed No Slop Yoke. Now, what it's going to require you to do is take your file and go in and adjust the top of the yoke so that it fits in there with essentially no slop. You're going to have to, I believe you're going to have to drill it, but you can drill it to match this pin, which really should be an easy one. And that's one I can't really understand why that's not, take, uh, that's not a better fit. Because you're drilling the hole in the cast, meaning in the frog, in order to house the pin. Why wouldn't you use the same or slightly larger to drill the hole that allows the pin to pivot? And then down here, you're going to have to go in. You're going to have to file and shape those ears to get that to fit. Um, in the slot on your adjuster knob. Now, if you don't want to go through all that, I have one other solution besides just living with it that uh, can make a difference. And this is a little bit of self-promotion, but I'm going to make you aware of it because it's been a game changer for a lot of people who find making that adjustment extremely difficult. Got to grab We've got something that we developed a couple years ago, and it's called the Adjust Star. And its primary function was this. You look at the size of that knob on this old Stanley. It is so small and especially you get a little bit older and you get a bit of arthritis in your hand. It is so can be so hard to adjust that and it's certainly not easy to do well on the fly. And what I mean by that is when I'm planing 
I like to go down and spin that adjuster knob and just sneak up on the shaving until I get it perfect. And it also allows me, before I've got too much blade out, to know whether or not the blade is sitting parallel to the sole. You just watch to see where the shaving comes out. Well, what's nice about this is that you can just spin it. Um, the first big feature is those spokes give you lots of leverage, so it's much easier to turn. But then there's enough uh, momentum in there that when you spin it like that, it, instead of you having to sit there and spin, 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 you can just hit it with your finger once, and it takes up all the slop. You know, again, my final advice is don't, don't um, worry about this to the point where it takes away the enjoyment of using a hand plane. Um, if your blade is nice and sharp, it's such a stress relieving process to plane a piece of wood that that should just become something that you just say, oh well, and live with it. But if you're looking for ease into making your adjustments, uh, the side benefit to being able to make that adjustment so much easier is that you can also spin it and get rid of some of your slop. But pay attention to the sharpening, check out my video, 32 seconds to sharp, walk through that process, learn how to do it. And then this will become your source of stress relief, not stress. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.